Everyone realized that theoretically a digital computer was a general purpose instrument, but hardly anyone thought of actually storing names and text and so forth in a computer. They were just scientific instruments to calculate numbers. People like myself were rather small-minded. I just saw that as a numerical machine. But there may have been others who, you know, really envisioned it as for all the power that it, it could eventually bring to the general public. Your Palm Pilots probably were powerful than Iliac One. So. Your cell phone. I mean, you know, it's it's wild. Eight weeks is not a very long time to be in class, but with today's rapidly expanding technology, it took us less time than that to convert our older and our slower 7094 system to a much more sophisticated system, a system that brings to the University of Illinois a much more efficient use of manpower and computer power. The Department of Computer Science at the University of Illinois has come a long way since the days of punch cards and processing units bigger than a car. Our history is one of innovation and excellence in education and research that has put computer science at Illinois in a world-class arena. Computing at Illinois started in the years after World War II and surprisingly began with a simple game of checkers. In 1946, a group of engineers, physicists, and mathematicians at the U of I set out to build a computer and program it to play checkers. It didn't work, but the computing quest continued. Two years later, the university considered buying a computer, but none of the manufacturers was willing to deal with the uncertainties. On the suggestion of John von Neumann, an Illinois group made up of researchers from various departments decided to build its own computer, designed after von Neumann's at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. Institute Director J. Robert Oppenheimer gave them the go-ahead. The plan was to build two computers, one at Illinois, another for the U.S. Army at the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. The Illinois group was organized as the Digital Computer Laboratory. By April 1949, university physicist Ralph Meager's team began work on the Aberdeen computer, called Ordvac. Based on the experience with the Ordvac, DCL built a second machine, the ILIAC, or Illinois Automatic Computer, with many improvements. It was finished in 1952. ILIAC was the first computer built and owned entirely by an educational institution. And the ILIAC was big, 10 feet long, 2 feet wide, more than eight feet tall and hit the scales at five tons. 2,800 vacuum tubes were inside. It provided most of the computer services for the university for 10 years. ILIACT helped design research instruments like particle accelerators and a radio telescope. You know, in those days, another th funny thing is that everyone uh, equated largeness with somehow power for the computer and yes. they say as as time goes on computers are going to become much larger and more powerful <laughs> you know <laughs> and of course just the opposite happened and later that year work began on a new machine one that a DCL report indicated would be 100 times faster than ILIAC and 10 times faster than any other computer DCL researchers began a study of advances such as transistors, parallel operation, high-speed circuitry, and better logic that would improve the usefulness, speed, and reliability of computers. ILIAC II would spearhead a breakthrough to a new generation of machines, using a trio of memories consisting of tape drives and disk files providing 35 million words of memory. The fast core memory of ILIAC II would provide more than 8,000 words of random access storage with an access time of less than two microseconds. Long before the electric prunes lit up and the Jefferson airplane took off, scientists at the University of Illinois' Digital Computer Laboratory had wired and amplified one of the world's most complex electronic music boxes.
By 1962, ILIAC was running at full capacity. Professor Don Gillies calculated the two largest known prime numbers, the biggest being 3,000 digits long. Our machines, these DCS's machines, DCL's machines, worked more or less on the first uh, immediately after they were set up, which was a terrific oddity in those days. At the same time, a pattern recognition computer study was underway. This computer, later named ILIAC-3, was designed to analyze bubble chamber photographs of high-energy particle events by using a two-dimensional arithmetic unit. But a fire in the lab would eventually cause the end of the project before it became fully engaged. By 1964, DCL was ready for another change. It was now called the Department of Computer Science. In 1965, the undergraduate math and computer science program was offered in the College of LAS, and the MS and PhD programs admitted their first students in 1966. The undergraduate computer science program would be offered within the College of Engineering several years later. By the late 60s, the department was growing, and so did the building with its second edition. A new generation computer took life at Illinois in 1965. ILIAC-4, the largest, fastest computer in the world. It was designed to link 256 parallel processors to a semiconductor memory and control system resulting in one billion operations per second. Daniel Slotnick was head of the project on software development. This project would eventually lead the department away from hardware altogether. The state of the department and its uh, strengths when I started were the caliber of the people, period. What was driving it was a number of large research projects, the largest of which was the ILIAC-4. We were just looking, trying to figure out what we could do. I was a young kid and I had a great sandbox to play in and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, and those are wonderful times, especially for graduate students. In the 1970s, computing at Illinois was in full evolution. The Computing Services Office was formed to separate computing services functions from research and education. The university was also home to Plato, the nation's first computer-assisted program of instruction. In the 1970s and 80s, Plato was helping thousands of students learn at terminals on and off campus. In the 1980s, construction of the last department-designed computer called CEDAR was begun. This symmetric multiprocessing system embodied advances in interconnection networks, control unit support of parallelism, optimizing compilers, and parallel algorithms and applications. By the end of the 80s, the department had outgrown its space and the final addition to DCL was built. 1997 brought a week-long cyberfest to celebrate the Urbana birth of the famous HAL 9000 computer from Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It is leaders like Ralph Meager, Abraham Taub, John Pasta, James Snyder, Bill Gear, Duncan Lowry, Dan Reed, and Mark Sneer who have set a strong course for this top five ranked department. Building on its ILIAC legacy, faculty members continue to make contributions to the field. Alumni have made their share of major contributions during their student days and later in their professional lives. When Illinois was the first to be awarded a Unix license by IBM, and when CS student Greg Chesson became the third person to contribute to the Bell Labs Unix kernel. Alum Steve Dorner created the email program Eudora. Former CS student Mark Andreessen and alum Eric Bina led the development of the graphics internet browser Mosaic for NCSA. Ray Ozzy created Lotus Notes. Max Levchin co-founded PayPal. And Andrew Yao was the 2003 Turing Award winner. The list goes on from this distinguished group. Computer science alumnus Tom Siebel is the co-founder of Siebel Systems Incorporated. He moved the department into a new era in 1999. Siebel donated $32 million to build this state-of-the-art facility. The Thomas M. Siebel Center for Computer Science is designed to be a living laboratory, providing researchers and students a unique opportunity to revolutionize the role of the computer in the workplace and classroom. 
I think it is our objective to build a research and education facility here on the campus in Champaign-Urbana that will be without compare anywhere in the world. The Department of Computer Science at the University of Illinois is building on a rich history. We're ready to move at the front of the computing curve. We've come a long way since old Betsy here was in her heyday some 20 years ago. And as the routine mechanics of determining the likes of pi r square becomes less and less cumbersome, all of us will be allowed a little more time to explore, explain, and enjoy this world of ours.